Jesus shall reign wherever the sun does its successive journeys run. His kingdom stretch from shore to shore till moon shall wax and wane no Good morning. As Catherine's coming forward to share announcements, um, I got a couple when she gets done. We'll see maybe to add to, so go ahead. All right. Can you guys hear me? No. Can you turn that up a little, Jeff? me now a little bit better okay hold it really close okay yeah <laughs> i guess i'm not oh hey <laughs> sorry now i'm gonna snort good morning everyone <laughs> oh just making sure everyone's awake on this gloomy day so we have sunday school that will take place by zoom at 11 a.m each sunday if you know of any kids wanting to be part of this, please contact me because they get kind of a supply bucket to go with it. Um, also, they'll need the Zoom link. High school and young adults are studying the book Not So Nice Bible Stories, Criminals of the Bible, and we're doing that also by Zoom at 11.45. If you are interested in joining this, please let me know. And like I've said, that you can join kind of any, any weekend. Um, it's one of those books that it doesn't build. It just, each, each chapter is its story of its own. Next Sunday is Reformation Sunday. We are encouraging our members to sit in the, the fellowship hall or downstairs to allow for families of our three confirmants to be in the sanctuary. You are also encouraged to wear red on this day. And don't forget to get your $1 raffle tickets to help the Bureau County Food Pantry. Also, youth and family have their 2021 calendars for sale for $5 each in the Narthex. Thank you guys. Very good. And I would add that um, confirmation class will get going. Okay, Hannah? 
Um, I still got some work to do to get everything ready. And every time I get, like I had a funeral this week that it was for somebody in the community that took the time that I was going to work on that. And um, had a few other things that have come up, which is, are good things, okay, too. So um, with that, confirmation will get going at some point. The other is we were very much hoping, you, you can't see these very well where you're at, but um, the kneeling pads that we had from 1955 that were kind of a velour velvet were really looking really, really bad. Buttons were off. So through memorial money, um, and we wanted these before confirmation, we got some new kneeling pads that have little crosses embedded in them, and they're really neat looking, okay? I just wanted to share that. So they have arrived. The other thing is, this is lighthearted, okay? I saw a comic that showed at the end of 2021, everybody's wearing their masks like this. <laughs> That's to get the ears back into position. <laughs> On that note. I invite you to stand for the baptismal remembrance. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water in the word, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord and the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And I would add that we have another baptism this afternoon. We just, that's the reason the baptismal banner is up. We, this is kind of exciting in the midst of all of this, okay? Let us pray. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give what, you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Good morning. First reading comes from Isaiah chapter 45, verses 1 through 7. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that you may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. The psalm is Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations and God's wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, more to be feared than all gods. 
As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols, but you, O Lord, have made the heavens. Majesty and magnificence are in your presence. Power and splendor are in your sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due the holy name. Bring offerings and enter the courts of the Lord. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before the Lord, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established, it shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exalt and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. The second reading comes from 1 Thessalonians 1, verses 1 through 10. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you. Because your message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of these regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols, to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, who he, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who rescues us from the wrath that is coming." I invite you to stand for the Holy Gospel. Today's Gospel comes from the 22nd chapter of Matthew. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the weight of, of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is on this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and I invite Sandy to come up front for the children's sermon and... Children remain in their seats. All right, good morning. All right. All right, kids, I'll ask you adults, too, and see if you know this. I'm going to ask some questions. I know you can't really answer me, but think about them. All right. Did they observe the 4th of July in England? 
Well, of course they do. Maybe not our 4th of July, but they still celebrate the 4th of July. Which is heavier, a pound of marbles or a pound of feathers? Well, they both weigh a pound, so they both weigh the same. If a tree falls and no one is around to hear it, can you say it made a sound? Hmm. Just questions to think about. All right. Well, some of the leaders once tried to tip, trick Jesus and get him into trouble. They asked him if they, if they should pay money to the Roman government or to God. They thought he would get into trouble no matter what he said. If he said the people should pay money to the Romans, well, then the religious people will get upset. And if they said he should pay money only to God, well, then the government people would be upset. It seemed like that kind of a question would trap Jesus no matter what he answered. Well, does anybody remember what was just said, what Jesus did? Well, he turned their trick question on them and asked them a trick question. Bring me a coin, he told them. Someone did bring him a coin. Now, the money used in Jesus' day had images on it like ours have images like of Abraham Lincoln and Thomas Jefferson, Franklin Roosevelt, and George Washington. But the Roman coins had likenesses of Caesars, who were kind of like presidents to us. Then Jesus said that the people are to give to the government what belongs to the government and give to God what is God's. Well, that's a trick question because we have to ask, what all is God's? Well, everything is God's, even the money. Jesus' answer is still true today. Sometimes we like to think that our money is our money, but even our money is God's. So let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Thank you for all the gifts to us, like the money we have to spend. In Jesus' name, ready? Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we have a situation today. The religious leaders are trying to trap Jesus by using the powerful issue of money. But Jesus refuses to be trapped over this issue. Jesus leaves it to each of us to evaluate one's own situation on how we give to God, not only in money and in our time, but with an attitude that God is the source of all life, as Sandy was mentioning in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's how the Bible begins. Jesus knows this as he says in a command form like a military general. Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. Well, the irony is there, if God created everything, God owns everything and loans it to us. So Jesus, as the cornerstone of the church, refuses to let the issue of money stand in the way of the gospel message. Even when he's double teamed by two groups who normally are rivals. In this confrontation, two parties join forces to trap Jesus. Now, when we hear the words Herodian and Pharisees, we don't understand quite what they would have had different ideas. It'd be kind of like today if um, both um, Republican and Democrat and they com combined a single platform for the entire year and included the um, Libertarians and the Green Party and everybody all agreed. So getting the Pharisees and the Herodians together w was kind of greatly unexpected. And Jesus knew this. 
You see, the Pharisees resisted and resented paying Roman taxes with money imprinted with this phrase, Tiberius Caesar, August son of the divine Augustus high priest, which meant that was the first commandment issue. For them to pay taxes meant that they were acknowledging that Caesar had the status of God, and they couldn't do that. So ironically, though, the Pharisees join in this plot with the Herodians, who, on the other hand, are just completely overt supporters of the Roman government. Two unlikely parties. These groups had two very different political views. It's often amazing how money can either split or join groups, right? Then there are those who in Christ grow closer together with the attitude that all in life is a gift from God for us to use and to share. We know that splitting happens, especially politically. Just watch the TV ads right now. But people splitting and joining and growing also happens within businesses, congregations, and even families. And it reminds me of this old German folk tale. One evening, as God was traveling the earth on foot, night overtook the Lord before God could find lodging. As God walked a narrow road, two houses appeared. One was large and beautiful, the other small and simple. Assuming the large house belonged to a wealthy family, the Lord thought, I will be no burden to a rich household. I'll spend the night with them. When the rich man opened the door, he looked the traveler carefully over from toe to head, head to toe. The Lord asked, Do you have a room for a stranger? The rich man shook his head slowly from side to side. My rooms are full of expensive furnishings and paintings that I'm storing until they will bring a good price. Besides, if I opened my door to every beggar who knocked, I'd have nothing but rags myself. Having said his piece, the rich man slammed the door shut and left the good Lord standing there. God turned his back on the house of the rich man and walked across the road to the small house. Before God could speak, the poor man greeted the Lord warmly. Please spend the night with us. We have a warm bed and plenty to eat. The wife of the poor man seemed equally pleased that a guest had decided to spend the night with them. She quickly prepared some vegetables, set the table, and, and invited the Lord to eat. The food was delicious. As they drank a cup of coffee and talked, the poor couple insisted that their guest sleep on their own bed. Though the Lord did not want to deprive the two old people of their own bed, God found it difficult to refuse their generosity. The poor couple concluded, You have been walking all day and are very tired. The next morning when the Lord arose, God discovered that the good woman had already been outside to milk the cow and had a hot breakfast prepared. After eating a hearty meal, the Lord thanked the couple and said, Because you have been so kind and generous, I offer you three wishes. Whatever you ask, I will give you. The whole couple were amazed. We have almost everything we need, they said. Oh, of course we wish for eternal salvation. And they thought a bit and added, we, we, we wish for good health for both of us. And how about a little daily bread? God was pleased and said, health and a little daily bread are but a single wish, so you still have one more wish. After consulting with his wife, the old man said, we cannot think of anything else. The Lord inquired, wouldn't you like a new house in place of this old one? Together the couple nodded, yes, that would be nice, the woman responded, speaking for both of them. Before the words were out of her mouth, the old hut was gone and a beautiful new home stood in its place. The Lord gave each of them a blessing and went on walking on the earth again for the day. When the rich man arose that day, 
he looked out his window and saw the neighbor's new home. Quickly, he crossed the road and asked what had happened. Still amazed at their good fortune, the poor couple told the rich man their entire story. When he returned home and related the tale to his wife, the rich man was angry. Had I only known the the stranger was the Lord, I would have at least offered a place to sleep. If I had not turned God away, we would have had the three wishes. It's not too late, his wife cried. Hurry, fetch a horse and catch the Lord. Invite God to come back and stay with us so that we can have the wishes. Quickly, the rich man saddled a horse and sped off in the direction the Lord had walked. Soon he reached the traveler. This time, the rich man spoke in polite and and a kindly fashion, explaining that he had gone looking for bedding, but when he returned to the door, he found the stranger had left by the time he returned. If you're ever back in the neighborhood again, I would love to have you stay with me. The Lord thanked the rich man and assured him that the Lord would stay with him another time, if ever, in the area. (laughs) Then the rich man asked whether he too, like his neighbor, might make three wishes. Gently the Lord told him that God would grant him three wishes, but that it would not turn out well for him. The Lord told him, it would be better if you do not use the wishes. The rich man assured the Lord that he would pick out something that would be of benefit to him, and of course also to his wife. God said, go home then, and the three wishes you make will be fulfilled. As the rich man rode home, pondering what great things he might wish to receive, the horse began to stumble. Irritated, the rich man cried out, I wish you would break your neck. Immediately, the old horse fell to the ground dead. Now the rich man had lost his first wish and had to walk home carrying a heavy saddle. As the hot afternoon sun beat down upon him, he remembered his wife sitting at home in their cool house. The longer he walked and the hotter the sun became, the more angry he became. Finally exasperated, he shouted to the sky, I wish my wife had to sit on this saddle and could not get off of it. In an instant, the saddle vanished. And the man realized that his second wish was fulfilled. The last miles seemed as difficult as the first, even though he did not have to carry that heavy saddle. When he arrived home, he was frustrated at losing his first two wishes and very sore from the long walk. Come down from there and fix me a meal, the man shouted as he saw his wife sitting high in the air on the saddle. She sobbed, I cannot move. For almost an hour, they both struggled to get her down from the saddle. At last, worn out from the work, the rich man was forced to use his third wish to free his wife. In turn, for the efforts of his day, he got nothing but trouble, a scolding, sore feet, and a dead horse. The poor couple, however, lived quietly and generously for the rest of their life. Hmm. The rich couple in this folk tale were worried about things, about what it was in it for them. They would only consider sharing if there was a return or a profit for them. The poor couple freely and generously gave to God, not expecting anything in return. They could see that all of life was a gift from God to be generously shared with others. They were good stewards of these gifts, and in return, they gave freely from their whole life as a gift to God. From their humble generosity, the poor couple were then granted even more. All this reminds me of another story about someone who humbly walked the earth and who also yet had all authority and power, and who could claim a legal right to all that is created. But instead, Jesus gave his all for us. On the cross, Jesus generously gave his life for our forgiveness, 
and in the resurrection, God abundantly gives us the promise of life beyond the grave. God's abundant generosity is rooted in grace and filled with gratitude, which then inspires and calls us to generously share what God has given us in the first place. God gives us our whole life and everything now. And in the resurrection, God gives us the promise of eternal life where there will be no more pain, sorrow, nor struggles. That is grace. That is abundant generosity. That should fill us with gratitude. So on that note, where have you recently seen generosity? As you... um, personally ponder that, I invite you to watch this video that was produced by our, it's a third in the three series, produced by our stewardship committee. And it's also printed, the words are printed on your bulletin insert, and um, we've emailed this, and they will be on our webpage sometime in the next couple days. Where have I seen generosity recently? When this pandemic hit, we weren't sure what that would do to our church finances. And I I will say that it's been overwhelming to see the generosity that people have stepped forward to make sure the mission of God's church continues. Thank you for your generosity. What can I say about generosity at St. Matthew's in 2020? St. Matthew's has always been the most generous giving congregation, even now during the pandemic. I look back over the years when Charlie and I were involved in the youth ministry. St. Matthew's was always there for us. Our church Easter breakfast, our church softball pancake breakfast, when the youth would sell cookies and coffee cakes, funeral luncheons, they helped with our table. The list goes on and on. Now, even during this pandemic, St. Matthew's generosity continues on. I feel blessed to be a member of St. Matthew's. During the derecho, when that had hit, um, my husband and I, Chris, as many of you know, um, we had some trees fall down in our backyard and we were contemplating, you know, just how we were going to um, go about getting those trees chopped apart and um, take care of those, as did many other people. Um, but late in that day, after the storm had hit and it was calm, there were two gentle- gentlemen out. Um, I was out helping my neighbor lift some things that um, I could lift and he could lift. Um, and we were just talking about the tree and then these two men pulled in and um, offered to help. They were just young, young men um, that just pulled up in their truck and said, you know, we've got chainsaws. If you would like us to, to cut apart the trees and we'd be willing to haul it off if, if you would like. And I just thought, wow, how awesome of these two young men to come along and help us out um and they stayed there for several hours and had even came back um the next day so that was just so so generous of those two guys to give their time um and even just their their service to us and to stop because Um, Like I said, there were so many people that needed help. And then um, my husband and I and the neighbor, we could team up and help other people after that. So that was really neat. And the kids helped too. Battery went dead. Oh, there it is. Okay. Thank you for your generosity.
believe in God the Father, Almighty Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. The third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen, amen. Amazing, I checked those batteries and they were good this morning. They went bad in the middle of the service, so I got them changed, Jeff, so thank you. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious God, you call us by name and invite us to share your good news. Send your Holy Spirit among preachers, missionaries, and evangelists. We give thanks for the witness of your servant, Luke, the evangelist whom the church commemorates today. Work through the ministry of your people, especially Elri Lutheran Parish, all disciples and congregations throughout the world, and the ELCA, Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, Bishop Jeff Clemens, Bureau County Food Pantry, Second Story, Another Child Foundation, and Lutheran World Relief. God of praise, the heavens and all creation declare your salvation. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the whole universe show forth your goodness. Raise up devoted stewards of all that you have made. Bless the newly baptized, especially Lane and Tatum, who will be baptized this afternoon. God of all, may your word of justice sound forth in every place. Restore divided nations and communities with reconciling truth. God of light, we pray for those living with pain, illness, isolation, grief, anger, or doubt, or just in need of our prayers, especially Jim, Steve, Peter, Shirley, Diane, Judy, Doris, Shirley, Alice, Jane, George, Margaret, Marion, Paul, Elizabeth, Fran, Ann, Porter, Terry, Marilyn, Mary, Nathan, Dana, Beth, Deborah, John, Tim, Julie, Lloyd, Nancy, Joy, Mona, Rod, Deb, Joanne, Samantha, Tricia, Deb, Jessica, Scott, Mary, Angelica, Lori, Sally, Sandy, Braden, Kendall, Karen, Ruth, Jeff, Gary, Caprice, Wilfred, Lisa, and all victims of disasters and violence and those impacted by our pandemic. Join their voices in a new song, assuming, assuring them that you call them each by name. God of truth, you show no partiality. May your spirit guide the work of justices, magistrates, court officials, and all vocations of the law that your promise of restoration may be known. Living God, as you raise Jesus from the dead, so raise up those who have died in you, especially Thomas and Mary Ann, and be with those families who have lost loved ones and friends from the COVID-19 pandemic. We give thanks for their witness, confident of your rescuing welcome for all. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand for the sacrament.
It is indeed our right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times, in all places, give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name in prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today. Forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Come to the banquet table where Christ gives himself his food and drink. Um, We will serve communion from the back with a self-contained cup. There's instructions on how they work in the bulletin there. Just make sure to pull the clear plastic first before you get to the foil. Um, Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home.
blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest, I in my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long.